Good afternoon to all. First of all, uh, I would like to uh, say that me and my special guest, we thank you all for listening to us. Um, and um, well, um, my presentation will drink uh, on some, a bit on, on some of the presentations you heard before, uh, in, namely uh, Susan Mickey's presentations. Um, and of course, Pedro, which, which talked about self-determination theory. And you'll see that in a minute. So, um, as you probably heard uh, today already, uh, theory-based interventions are believed to be more effective than non-theory-based ones. Uh, but as uh, Susan said today, we can't really know that. Uh, and this is because uh, rarely, uh, how theories have informed interventions is reported um, in, uh, in papers. And therefore, we cannot infer much about theory's role in intervention's effectiveness. And again, as Susan already said today, if we are to improve interventions, we need to unpack the black box uh, of interventions. That is, we need to understand which components, techniques have been used, why they were selected, and if they were effective in changing behavior. Uh, Self-determination theory is an example of a popular theory which is being used to inform interventions. However, considerable vari variability exists in how it is described and reported in papers. And that's why in this presentation and using self-determination theory as an example, we'll start unpacking the, the black box of SDT interventions. So this presentation will have two goals. The first one, is to review how SDT has been described and tested in exercise, diet, and weight management interventions. And as a second goal, we're going to, project, to present to you uh, a current project, which is ongoing right now, and that is seeking to identify and isolate the behavior change techniques that are more likely to influence key SDT mediators of successful behavior change. So, regarding our first goal, the, third, the first thing, thing we wanted to do was to see how adequately has SDT been applied in exercise, diet, and weight management interventions. And in order to critically and rigorously uh, evaluate SDT interventions, we used the theory coding scheme uh, developed by uh, Mickey and Presswich. This, as Susan has already uh, told you today, this is a reliable tool covering several aspects uh, such as the ones listed in the slide, and uh, that allows us to evaluate the theoretical basis of interventions. But first, we needed to find SDT interventions. So uh, we conducted a systematic, comprehensive search of peer-reviewed studies in several electronic databases and key scientific journals. Studies were included if they reported on SDT interventions conducted with adults, um, and that measured at least one of the outcomes of interest. There were no restrictions with respect to study design, type of comparison condition, format, and length of intervention and targeted population. And we came up with 28 studies reporting on 18 unique uh, interventions. This should be noted, I, I should uh, highlight that this, uh, this review was done April last year, so since then, it's probable that um, more studies have been published. We will update this review soon. But now results will be based on the interventions and uh, the studies um, that we found on that uh, review. So regarding studies characteristics, uh, we were able to find only 10 randomized control trials. So all the other studies had um, other uh, different study designs. The average samples ranged between 100 and 300 participants, and there were uh, variable settings and uh, the length of the studies also uh, varied. Uh, concerning the intervention format, we also noted that there was a high variability in the, the way, in the mode of delivery uh, of the interventions, in the number and, and duration of the sessions, and in interventions length. You can see that uh, some interventions had one day, lasted one day, and another, uh, other interventions lasted 12 months. So it's a big difference here. And now, uh, regarding the main uh, results of this review, uh, as I said, we used the, the theory coding scheme. Uh, and uh, I, I wanted to highlight here also that uh, 
we can bind the most relevant items of the theory coding scheme for the purpose of this presentation. And of course, based on the similarity of uh, the content. Hence, regarding the first category, theory relevant constructs, uh, we found that all interventions targeted relevant SDT related constructs. And then in most trials, intervention techniques were derived from theoretical constructs. However, uh, there was a great variability on how thoroughly they were described between studies, ranging from sing two single paragraphs to several pages. Sorry. Regarding uh, the second category, the, the link between theoretical constructs and intervention techniques, um, less than half of the studies explicitly linked all behavior change techniques to SDT relevant constructs. Uh, in the remaining studies, at least one technique was linked to a theoretical construct or a group of techniques, but not all of them. And again, it should be noted that the connections, the links, the relationships established between intervention techniques and theoretical constructs varied in depth. In addition, in, a, in addition, several trials reported using other techniques not STT specific in combination, such as, for instance, motivational interviewing techniques or self-regulation skills training. In most studies, STT relevant constructs were assessed at pre and post intervention using measures with adequate validity or reliability. However, in a substantial number of trials, a limited uh, set of constructs of STT constructs was measured, and typically motivational regulations. So aspects as need support, need satisfaction, or goals were rarely reported. Regarding the changes produced by the interventions in theory relevant constructs, in approximately two thirds of the studies, the intervention led to a significant change in at least one STT relevant construct. We believe that the lack of significant changes in the remaining studies might be due to the substantial variability in intervention quality. The thing is that we can't really know whether the intervention was really faithful to theoretical propositions given the vague descriptions provided in several papers. Regarding the use of mediation analysis of theory relevant constructs, this was limited to about one third of the studies. In addition, we found a limited use of formal tests of mediation, those using more sophisticated uh, procedures. And we could only find uh, three studies that tested the whole SDT model. So most of the studies that tested mediation just tested it in a, tested a section or a part of the SDT process model, not all. Thus, although significant mediation effects have been observed in these studies, more research is required to safely assure that changes in SDT constructs explain intervention's effect on behavior. Finally, regarding uh, results and whether they were discussed in relation to theory, uh, they were, in general, they were discussed in relation to STT premises. Uh, yet, the poor quality of the interventions that prevailed here in this review, uh, with only 44% of them linking all intervention techniques to theory constructs, uh, naturally will limit the discussion, that is, and the interpretation of the, the results. So, as a summary of the status of SDT intervention research at this point in time, April last year, uh, at that time there were uh, still relatively few intervention studies in exercise, diet, and weight management domains, but some protocols uh, were there and with good description, so this is encouraging. Uh, we observed an effort to link intervention techniques to key SDT mechanisms, although they varied in depth. There was also a limited set of constructs being measured, mainly autonomous motivation, and a limited and variable use of mediation analysis. So the results seem, of this review seem to indicate a moderately good use of SDT in intervention studies in these areas, exercise, diet, and weight management, although several areas of improvement were noted. One thing that became apparent with this review was that the content of SDT interventions has been relatively poorly mapped out. We mean that a detailed description of the intervention elements of SDT that actively contribute to behavior change need yet to be uh, uh, elucidated. 
And this is what we're currently trying to do. We're trying to identify intervention techniques that specifically target each SDT relevant mechanism of behavior change. And how are we doing this? Well, by isolating the unique techniques, those techniques that can't be divided further, uh, techniques that were derived from STT-based interventions, mostly those that do uh, the work when it comes to changing critical mediators of motivation and behavior change. Sorry. The first thing we had to do was selecting the key mechanisms underlying motivation and behavior change. And as Pedro has presented to you already today, and according to the STT process model, the extent to which the environment supports the satisfaction of three basic universal psychological needs, autonomy, competence, and relatedness, is what will determine the type of, regu of motivation regulating behavior, and consequently the type of outcomes that will ensue. That's why these three needs are considered as the central mediators of uh, behavior change to STT. And that's why in the current project, we focused on the identification of intervention techniques that specifically tapped into each of these needs. And here, it's how this is being done. So this is regards the identification process of these techniques. And first, uh, a preliminary list of STT-based techniques related to the satisfaction of the three STT needs was derived from the STT-based interventions included in the systematic review. Then this list was expanded by looking for additional techniques in other sources from the STT literature, which uh, are listed in the slide. This are, uh, we were keeping health behavior change in mind w when seeking these uh, techniques, but we also consulted sources from other areas such as education or physical education, adapting those techniques when needed. We're currently on the second phase of this process, which consists of an iterative process, and we're currently seeking external validity from uh, uh, STT theorists and specialists regarding the techniques we have already listed. And here, it, it, it's what we have accomplished so far. As I said, this is an uh, ongoing project. The, these techniques that I'm presenting to you now are currently under revision. Um, I want to, to say that we looked for techniques that specifically tapped on each need. But it should be noted that several techniques could be placed under more than one need. For simplicity, uh, we have placed them under the prevailing need. And so far, uh, we have identified 16 autonomy supportive techniques, uh, 10 related and supportive techniques. I'm not going through them because of time. And uh, 13 competence, competence supportive techniques. These techniques are currently being classified as being more about content or style by the expert panel. And by style, we mean the way in which the content is um, transmitted, is conveyed to the targeted person or audience. Besides listing these techniques, we are working on their clear definition, given, an, given that often they are not clearly described in many papers. So we're not creating anything new, we're just gathering the information and putting it in a more practical and useful way to practitioners, professionals, researchers, okay? And here are some examples of what we're doing. Uh, I chose a technique supportive of each need. And for example, regarding the technique providing choice, which consists on collaboratively devise a menu of effective and meaningful options with clients, we could easily imagine a doctor saying to his patient, Meg, although I have shared with you some information and some concerns, we saw several courses of action and I would like to feel that the decision was really made by you. And to finish my presentation, I would like to share with you some of the issues and challenges that we're facing while performing this, this interesting and really challenging uh, exercise. So the first one regards the cross-contamination that exists between needs and I, that I told you about. So many techniques, uh, they cross over into supporting multiple needs. They're not exclusively supportive of only one. Uh, this is not a problem at all. <laughs> this just highlights the synergy between the needs that is proposed by SDT. And effectively, it's difficult to imagine supporting autonomy or competence without supporting relatedness. For instance, without su 
taking into, into account people's goals, interests, their situation at the, co the current moment. Thus, this made us wonder if we should only consider need supportive techniques as a whole and not STT specific techniques to target each need. Another issue we've been discussing about regards the technique's uniqueness. Are they STT specific really? In fact, many are common to other theoretical and intervention frameworks, such as motivational interviewing, the five A's framework, and uh, self-regulate or self-regulation self theory. This notwithstanding, techniques within the autonomy and relatedness species seem to have the, a clear STT mark. Since competence is a common construct in other theories, for instance, such as social cognitive theory, uh, some overlapping is uh, expected here. A third issue that came up uh, regards whether there is a minimal content for an intervention to be considered uh, an STT-based intervention. Are there core characteristics or behavior change techniques that must be present in order for an intervention to be considered STT-based? And I could pose the, the opposite question. Uh, are there characteristics that, if present, prevent an intervention from being considered an STT-based intervention? So we're reflecting upon this. Another <laughs> challenging and interesting issue uh, that came up regards the differentiation between content and style uh, techniques. I told you that the expert panel is now trying to classify these techniques that were listed into uh, trying to distinguish them between style and content. Okay? And this is not a, an easy exercise. Uh, given that some techniques have the potential to be more or less need supportive depending on the style of the conversation that ensues. And in effect, style may encompass very subtle aspects around language and nonverbal communication in the case of face-to-face -face interventions, which may be hard to characterize and evaluate even though a client or audience may detect it and use it as information. Thus, style it may, it may resist being reduced to a group of techniques. So this is a worthwhile endeavor which will allow a better description of what takes place between practitioners and uh, clients or patients. Another thought that came up is whether we should also consider don'ts, not just do's, uh, in the list. We, this means including need thwarting behaviors or better said, uh, the, the necessity of avoiding certain need thwarting behaviors. In reality, need thwarting may not be the exact opposite of need satisfaction, so some strategies might be somewhat unique and worth exploring. And to finish, another challenge that we're currently facing regards the translation and adaptation of some of these techniques to interventions that uh, have no personal contact with the person or uh, uh, the group. And this includes ICT-based programs. So, uh, any thoughts on these issues or others that uh, have been discussed here? Uh, I hope they are welcome and I hope you have and share them with us in the discussion that will follow. Thank you.